Or maybe you'd rather be turned around. Oh, yeah, Dan, you're not a kid. You're too old. You're too old. I, uh, I've been studying through the book of Ruth for the last couple of months, um, just in preparation for the Bible study that we were getting ready, that we were doing. And uh, it's, it's amazing uh, how much truth there is in Scripture. And uh, as, we, as we know, the Old Testament is given to us for, uh, to learn from. Amen? Uh, the Bible tells us in, Corinthians, in the book of Corinthians that, uh, that it, it's given to us so, so that we don't make the same mistakes that other people made. Has anybody ever made a mistake that somebody else made before them? The truth is we all have made the mistakes that other people have made. You know why? Because we're thick-headed, right? Well, we, we, but God has given us uh, some, of these, uh, some of these passages in the Old Testament. Uh, and he, let me rephrase that. God has given us all of the passages of the, of the Old Testament. But some of these things were, were, are, are there so that we don't make the same mistakes other people have made. Uh, today, if I was going to, 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 uh, to give a title to the message, it would be uh, The Dangers uh, of the Road of Compromise. Uh, we're going to just look at the first six verses this morning. Uh, we're going to look at the rest of the chapter this afternoon as we as we're looking at the book of Ruth uh, uh, but we don't have we'd be here too long this morning you guys would all be hungry be throwing things at me and I don't like to get hit with stuff so we'll just cover the first uh, six verses this morning uh, but we're, what we're going to look at is is uh, a it's gonna be a little bit different it's 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 and I, I don't I can't say it's going to be a Bible study but uh, uh, we're going to look at some things about uh, the situation that God has, is revealing to us here in the book of Ruth in these first six verses. And, and then we're going to come back and, and, meet, and, and try to garner some truth from that that we can apply to our lives. Because isn't that what Scripture is supposed to be for? It isn't just to learn. It isn't just, it, it, Ruth is a beautiful love story, amen? But in, the, in, in this love story of, of the book of Ruth and all the guys, are, oh man, it's like I have to watch a chick flick, right, Cody? I can't stand chick, no, it's not a chick flick. Uh, but, but in this, it's uh, in, in the picture of the kinsman redeemer, in, in the picture of the grace and the mercy of God and the life, in the life of Ruth and Naomi, and in all of that, we also see at the very beginning of the, the book of Ruth, we see, uh, we see a family that, that's gone down the wrong road. They made a choice that has affected uh, that has affected the entire outcome of of, of their lives, and, and it's changed the direction, and, and and eventually brings an end to their life. And you say, well, how can you say that, that God uh, is punishing them for the decisions that they're going to make? And we'll we'll get into it in a moment. Uh, and, and because Naomi herself has said, and God never corrected her. It's given to us for a purpose to understand that the decisions that, that they made, and Naomi says in verse, in verse uh, uh, 13, that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. She comes back into, into Bethlehem, Judah, uh, years later after having left with her husband and her, and her sons, and she comes back and they call her Naomi, and she says, hey, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Because Naomi, because I left full, she left with everything, and she goes, but I'm coming back empty. I've lost everything. So understand that there is a period of time here, and we're going to take a closer look at it, but, but there, there, there's a problem. Listen, there are, there, are, there are things that happen in our life as a result of choices that we make. That's something that we as adults need, are hopefully have learned as we've grown older, that every choice that we make has, has a consequence. If, if I choose to eat bad food, it's bad for me. If I choose to break the law, I might get pulled over as I'm driving down the street. I may end up in jail depending on what laws I've broken, right? Uh, there are consequences. Listen, in, 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 the, in the same vein, uh, listen, there are consequences when we ignore the, the, the word of God and ignore the will of God, ignore the, the, who God is altogether. And that's where we find the people of Israel here in this time. We're going to read the very first verse, and then we're going to pray and seek God's face. It says, Now it came to pass in the days uh, when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. I pray that you would help us this morning. 
Lord, as we look at, the, at this picture of Elimelech and his family, Lord, and the consequences of what happened to his family, Lord, I pray that it would be a, 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 a guide, Lord, that it would be a warning for, for each one of us, Lord, that we would uh, do our very best uh, to live our lives in accordance to your word and not in accordance with our own desires and our own wants. God, I pray that you would help us this morning. I, Lord, I, I, Lord, I empty myself of myself. Lord, I, I know that I don't have anything worthy to give these folks, Lord, other than the word of God, which is laid out before us. God, I, I, I know that there's nothing in me that's worth, nothing, no words are worth listening to other than the words uh, that are written here on this page before me. God, I pray that the spirit of God would fill me. Lord, that you would speak through me. Lord, I ask for your help because I need it. Lord, I pray that their hearts would be open and their ears would be open to the, to the, to the word of God, not to me. Lord, to the, to the moving of the spirit of God, not to, not to me. And God, I pray that you be glorified in the lives that are affected and, 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 and conform to your word. Help us, Lord, now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We see a few things here. In this very first verse, in fact, we see almost all of it in the first verse. It says, now it came to pass in the days of the judges, where the judges ruled. Now, so we can stop right there. This gives us some information. This uh, tells us the book of Ruth was written not after the book of Judges, but uh, this takes place during the book of Judges. Now, what do we know about the book of Judges? We know that they, that they at the end of Joshua, and in fact we kind of preached on this a little bit last week. At the end of uh, of Joshua, uh, there was uh, there was a period of time uh, when when uh, when uh, everybody did, did was still trying to serve God. But once Joshua and his generation died out, the Bible says what? There rose up a generation that that what? That knew not the Lord. There was a problem. Uh, some things hadn't been taught. Uh, and more importantly, it wasn't just the, hey, listen, uh, fo- folks, you can teach your kids and you can tell your kids uh, unless the, your kids experience the, 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 the work of God and the power of God in their own lives. It doesn't matter what you tell them. I'll say it again. It doesn't, you can teach your kids everything right unless, unless your kids experience God for themselves. It's not going to matter. See, so didn't my parents raised me right? They taught me right. They, but in, until God did something in me, nothing changed. And I had to experience it for myself. Uh, and what happened in the book of Judges is, and go back to Judges chapter one. We'll cover it again just quickly. I want to set the scene of what's going on here before we uh, before we move forward uh, in the book of Ruth, Judges chapter chapter one. Uh, jump to chapter 2, sorry. Verse 10, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet knew the works which he had done for Israel. So the, the, the generation of people at this point in time, they've grown up, they, they, they don't know the Lord, they don't remember his works, they don't remember who he is. And it says in verse 12, they forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods uh, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. So they, they, not only do they not know who God is, not only do they not have a personal relationship with God, or any kind of relationship with God. Now they've begun to, to, to tie in with the world and, and, and with the nations that are of that world. They, and they not only shop in their shops and live in, the, in that world, uh, and, which God told them not to, by the way. We covered that. We talked about that last week. Uh, but they disobeyed God. They didn't remove those things from their life. And it had an effect on these, these young people. And, and not only did they forsake God, but they began to, to go and worship these other gods, these other false gods. They would bow down at their idols, and, and, and they were worshiping them. It says in verse 13, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And listen, that's big. We're talking, we're, they were taking their children, and, and those gods, and there, was, there was a human sacrifice to those gods. I want you to understand, it wasn't just a, they went to, to a different church somewhere. They were, they were worshiping not God at all, but other false gods. This is the time of the judges. It says in two, in, in, in two verses in the book of Judges that, that every man did that which was right in his own eyes, 
Because there was no king in Israel. There was no leader. Not only was there no leader, but they followed not God. They followed whatever they wanted. Here's a question. Do, not, do we not live in a world like that today? Where everybody does that, whichever, whatever that feels good, whatever feels right. Listen, you can have your truth and I can have my truth. As long as your truth doesn't override my truth, we're all good. I'm sorry, but that's not truth. It isn't truth at all. There has to be a, 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 a basis, a, a, a foundation of truth, which we can all agree on, that this is right and this is wrong. And if there isn't, then no, there isn't. It's just opinion. That's the world that they were living in. People weren't worshiping God. The, the Israel as a nation wasn't worshiping God. It doesn't mean that there weren't some that worshiped God. In fact, uh, there was a t- this was the time of judges, right? Uh, the, the time when the judges would, would rule and God would raise up uh, certain judges. Uh, Samson was a judge during this time. Gideon was a judge during this time. Uh, uh, there were things that would happen. And as we, if we continued reading through, uh, what we would see is you, during this time of the judges, that the people would turn away from God and they would follow after the gods of Baal and Ashtaroth and, and they would do their own thing and whatever was right in their eyes, not according to the law of God, what had been already given to them and taught to them and, and they'd forgotten those things. And then God would bring the enemies of God against them. The Amorites or the Moabites or the Philistines or whoever else, uh, they would come in and they would they would uh, they would ransack. They would take some cities. They would take some people. Uh, during the time of Gideon, they would they would come in. They wouldn't actually take the land. They would just take all the crops and they take all their food. So uh, so much so that they would hide. And that's where Gideon was, right? He was hiding in the threshing floor, afraid that they were going to come, that they were going to see him, and they were going to come and 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 take his crops. Uh, uh, listen, there were times when when famine would come in, and all of this was done for a purpose. It was. Done done to bring the people of God back to a place where they knew they needed God. Those, those famines and those, those times of, uh, of being overcome by the enemies, were, they were, what, this is exactly what happened. It was like, it was like this, this, this uh, it was almost like a loop. The, they would turn away from God. God would bring famine. God would bring the enemy. God would bring something, uh, some kind of trial into their life. They would bring them back to a place where they would begin to cry out to God and say, God, we need you. Where are you? You brought us out of Egypt and you forgot us. And God, what, what's happened? And God would raise up a judge and that judge would bring them, uh, give them victory over their enemies or, or God's hand would come back upon them and, 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 and take away the famine and bring back uh, food and water into the area. And, and they would praise God and they would bless God and say, thank you, God, for all you've done. And then they'd forget again. And they'd go back to Baal and Ashtaroth. They would begin to, to worship Baal and Ashtaroth, and God would be angry. And this happened over and over and over and over and over again. And this is the time that we see uh, the book of Ruth is written in. And I want you to notice something. It says in the days, verse 1 of, 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 of Ruth chapter 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. It's a time of famine. It's not necessarily that the enemies are out, out against them, but there isn't any rain and the crops aren't growing and people are hungry and people are starving. And, 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 and that's the time period, uh, time period that they're in during those judges. And listen, it rains in, on the just and the unjust, amen? That's what the Bible tells us. It, uh, there are times of famine for the good and for the, for the wicked. And I don't know where, where Elimelech was, whether he was worshiping Baal and Ashtaroth, or whether he was just trying to find a, a, a place for his family uh, to, to, to get some food and to, to, to be able to survive. But, but it says that at that point in time, he decided to get up and move. But here's the problem. Did God tell him to get up and move? No. In fact, God is the one that brought the famine. What was the purpose for the famine? The same as it was every other time there was a famine or the enemy came up. It was to bring them back to him. And so in that trial, instead of bowing to God and seeking God's face and God's help, he said, I'm going to remove myself from this trial and I'm going to go over here to Moab where they've got food. Where they've got food. Now, something you need to know about the Moabites. The Moabites, uh, they're, no one, they're, they're, they're not friends of uh, they're not friends of the Israelites, although they have they're related in a way. 
Uh, if you go back into the, into the book of Genesis and you, and you read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Lot uh, has escaped Sodom and Gomorrah with two daughters. Uh, they, they run up on to, to, the, to, the, to the mountain to, to get away from the, the dangers, and it's just Lot and his two daughters, and his two daughters hatch a plan. They said, listen, our father's going to die, and it's just going to be us. There's going to be nobody to carry his name, so let's get him drunk. And you lay with him tonight, and then we'll get him drunk tomorrow, and then I'll lay with him tomorrow, and, and we'll, we'll conceive a son through our father. Incest, wickedness, evilness. And they bore, they both got pregnant, and they bore children, and from those children, the Moabite people became. It was a wicked people. There are people away from God that they, they didn't love God. Now, yes, they, 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 you go back and follow back to Abraham. Lot was a nephew of, of, of Abraham. And in fact, the Bible says that he was just, that he was righteous. He vexed his righteous soul. He was a, a believer in God. But his life, in his life, he compromised. When when Abraham came to Lot because their, their, their servants were fighting with each other, he says, you pick where you want to go. And Lot looked and he says, hey, it's really pretty over there. The grass is green. I think I can really take care of my sheep. And what happened? He says, the Bible says he chose that land towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and he pitched his tent towards Sodom. And the next time you find him, he's in Sodom. And then the next time you find him, he's sitting in the gate of Sodom. This, this compromise... And what happened when the angels of God came to, to, came to Lot, uh, uh, he, uh, he, uh, they said, listen, this is a wicked and evil place, and, and God is going to destroy this. You need to go and tell your, 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 your children and bring them out. And he went to his son-in-law and said, hey, listen, God is going to destroy this place. And you know what the Bible says that, he, that they did? They laughed at him because they thought he was mocking. Why would they think he was mocking if he was living a righteous, holy life before God? He wasn't. He compromised, and his decisions affected his children, much like Elimelech. So in the days of the judges, the days of famine, a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. I want you to notice something here. Verse 2 tells his name, the names of the family. It's Elimelech, that's the father, Naomi, and then Malon and Chilion are the two, the two sons, and they are Ephrathites. Uh, it's a, one of the tribes of Judah, of Ephraim. Uh, uh, they live in Bethlehem, Judah. And it's, but go back up to verse 1. It says, they went to sojourn in the country of Moab. Now, something about the word sojourn is important for you to understand here. They didn't intend to, to stay there. The word sojourn means to dwell for a short period of time. They said, listen, we're, listen, we're going to compromise. We're going to go to Moab just, to, just till, the, till, the, till it starts to rain again, just till the, the crops get better and, and, and it's better for us to come back. We're going to go there uh, until this trial is over and then we'll come back. And once that's all done, we'll, we're going to do what's right and we're going, to, we're going to live for God and we're going to do everything that God has told us to do. But until then, we're going to go and sojourn here. We're going to go and dwell here just for a, a short period of time, a temporary period of time. But then it says in verse 2 that they continued there. They moved there and they continued there. They, they moved in, they built a house, they, 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 they bought a house, they, 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 they set in some roots. And the Bible tells us very, very quickly that something happened to Elimelech. Verse 3, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Now, now, you can say, well, how do you know that God killed him? It doesn't say that God killed him. You're right, it doesn't say that God killed him. But Naomi says later that, she, that God took him and her two sons. See, there are consequences to our decisions. Uh, uh, he decided to, to, to remove himself from the, from the will of God instead of turning back to God and seeking God's face and seeking God's help and repenting from their sins and the, the wickedness of, uh, of the people of the, the people of Israel were doing. They said, no, we're just going to go over here and live and dwell among the Moabites where there's food and, and we're only going to be here for a little while. We're only going to live in this sin for a little while. It's, it's just a compromise, but we're going to get back to doing what's right. And one day we're going to, once things are easier for us, but God said, no, there is, a, there is going to be a consequence to your decision. And God took Elimelech. 
We need to understand, folks, that, that when we make a decision, you might say, listen, it's only for a short period of time. I, 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 it, it, it's hard to do what's right right now. It's hard to be where God wants me to be. It's hard to go through this trial. I'm just going to pick up stakes and move over here for a short period of time until things get easier. Listen, life will never get easier. Whether you're a child of God or you're not a child of God, there are trials in your life. The benefit of being a child of God and being in the, in the will of God is we know that God will bring us through those trials. Don't pick yourself up and move out and say, I'm sorry, God, I just can't deal with it anymore because then you're dealing with it on your own and there are consequences to your decision. The first consequence to his decision was it took his life. Elimelech died in the land of Moab. He died... Well, while he only intended to sojourn there for a short period of time, he intended to get right, he, got, he, he died in sin. And his testimony and his legacy is forever that that's where he died. Don't think that you can just pick yourself up and, and go back and do what's right at any time because you don't know when, when uh, you, if you're going to have another day. Yes, God is merciful and God is just. And God is righteous. And no matter what he decides, if he t decides to take you home, the truth is he knows the consequences to your decisions better than you do. Not only did it affect Elimelech, but it affected his two sons. Yes, they died, but before they died, I want you to see the, their fall. Verse 4 says, And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name was, of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. They took wives. They, uh, they, they, were living there. They, they, they were living there in Moab. There weren't any Jewish women around for them to look at. And listen, I, I was a young man once. Uh, uh, I'm not young anymore, but I'm still a man, uh, uh, red-blooded. Uh, uh, there comes a point in time when a man wants to have a wife, and they weren't going to travel back to Israel. They were there. There were beautiful women all around. Wasn't that the, the warning of God to the, to, to, to the people of Israel, that if they allow the, 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 these Gentiles, the Canaanites and the Amorites and all the other the Hittites and all the other rites, to stay in the land of, of Israel, the promised land of Israel, that they would worship their gods and their children would marry their wives. And that was expressly forbidden by God. Expressly forbidden. They were not to marry. And you can say, and, and we'll, we'll get to it in a few minutes, but you can say, well, you, it all turned out for the best. That doesn't take away from what they did. And we'll get into that in a minute. So what's happened? Malon and Chilion, they, these two young men, because they're in Moab, have made a choice. And they've chosen to marry Moabite women. Their father's decision to sojourn and then continue in the land of Moab and in sin has affected the decisions of his children. They sinned because they were there. It's that simple. They sinned because they were, they were there. They, they, were, they were in Moab. The, the, those were the women that were available for them to marry. They, they didn't want to wait until they were ancient. They didn't know how long. They, listen, they could have gone back to Israel at any time. They're still continuing to dwell there. Why? Because they were brought to that place by their father. Listen, folks, our decisions affect our children. Our decisions, listen, they weren't punished. They didn't die because their father brought them there. They died because they took women of the people of Moab. And they married them. They're the expressly forbidden by God. Our children will take the next step farther than we take. They will. Remember, every man, at this point in time, every man is doing that which is right in his own eyes. They're not looking to the law of God. They're not looking to the word of God. They're not looking to the prophets of God. They, 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 they're not looking to God at all. They're, they're in a land where they're not supposed to be, and they're, 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 they're just looking at women that they're not supposed to look at. They, they married those women. And the very next verse, you find that they both died. Why? 
Why? Because they sinned against God. They, 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 they chose to do that because their father chose to bring them there. Now their choice to... Now, something I want you to understand. Your children's choices are not your choices. And you're not necessarily responsible for your children's choices, but you can certainly influence your children in the wrong way or the right way. We're talking about the road to compromise today, today and there's a danger here. At this point, the only one left is Naomi. And now her two daughters-in-law, women of Moab, What's happened? In a time of trial, in a time of difficulty, the people of God got up and left the trial and tried to remove themselves in it and got themselves into sin. They neglected the will of God and the word of God and they did that which they thought was right and they got themselves in trouble. And because of that, God punished them. And their choices affected the choices of their children. Listen, it, it wasn't a geographic, the problem here is not geographical. I want to point that out here. The problem here is not geographical. The, bro- the problem here was obedience or the lack thereof. It wasn't that it wasn't that they were that they were that they that they got up and moved or that he that it should the Limelech shouldn't have been trying to find food for his family. A father is to provide for his family, amen. That wasn't the problem. The problem was they left they left Israel to do it, and they went down to a place that is a place that that, that is a symbol of sin. Don't we do that sometimes? The book of James tells us that the, uh, the word accounted all joy when, when we fall into the diverse temptations. Uh, listen, I have a hard time thanking God for broken legs. For, for my, uh, I have a hard time uh, uh, thanking, thanking the Lord when, when uh, my car breaks down or when this happens or that happens. Listen, it can be difficult in the midst of the trial to say, thank you, Lord, for this trial. But the Bible doesn't say to thank him for the trial. It says to count it all joy because the, for the reason of the trial. The reason for the trial in James chapter 1, and if you turn over there with me, if you, if you would real quickly, is in this. It's in, it's in verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and, and entire, wanting nothing. See, the problem was, Elimelech, instead of knowing that the trying of his faith worked patience, knowing that, that, the, that this trial they were going to was going to bring them back to a right relationship with the Lord, uh, uh, instead of letting, uh, letting, verse 4, that patience have her perfect work, he said, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Listen, I'm only going to be gone long enough for this trial to be over with, but once it's over, I'm coming back to the Lord. Listen, you, you, we, we don't have that opportunity or that right. And once you understand, God is sovereign. When, when, when I say the word sovereign, I mean he is in control and he knows, he knows what you're going to do before you do it. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. He knows your desires. He knows, he knows you better than you know yourself. He is sovereign. He is in control. Now, that doesn't mean he makes you make the wrong decision. That means he knows when you're going to. He didn't make Elimelech pick up and move, but he knew that Elimelech would pick up and move. He didn't make Malon and Chilion marry the brides of uh, women of Moab, but he knew that they were going to. 
And I said I was going to get to this in a little bit. You can say, well, listen, Ruth, uh, Ruth is found in the book of Matthew in the lineage of Jesus Christ. God worked all this out for specifically. That's why they sinned. No, they sinned because they wanted to get out of the trial. They, the, those boys sinned because of the, the influence of their father and because of the, their, their disregard of what the word of God, the law of God said. That's why they sinned. But God, in his mercy, can take up our mess and he can make something beautiful out of it. And that's what happens in the book of Ruth. Listen, we're not perfect, and I understand that, but the mercy and grace of God is beyond that. But that doesn't mean that we, get, we have the opportunity or we, have the, or we can do whatever we want because the grace of God will fix it, right? Romans says, should we sin that grace may abound? What are the next words? God forbid. We don't sin so that God can make, it, make it something beautiful out of it. We, be, we should be obedient to the will of God and the word of God because there's beauty in that. But God knows when we're going to mess up. God, in fact, God knew when I was going to mess up. And God's will is going to take place. He's working in us and through us. And we're, we're to be obedient to the word of God and the will of God. We're to count it all joy when we find ourselves in those, those temptations, knowing that God is doing a work in us and he's going to draw us back to him. How much better would it have, would it have been if Elimelech and his family had stayed in Israel? Because you know in chapter 2, the Bible tells us about the man who did stay in Israel. Turn over real quickly, if you would, Judges, sorry, Ruth chapter 2. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I want you to, I want the comparison. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's. This is a relative, a a, a near kinsman, somebody who was closely, closely related to her husband, Elimelech. A mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. He was a man of power, he was a man of wealth. He was a man who stayed in Israel and, would, and at the end of the book of Ruth would become the, would, would become the, the, uh, the kinsman redeemer, the picture of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he stayed. Was there, was, was there a famine where, where Boaz was? Yeah. I don't know Boaz's heart other than the, other than the word of God tells us that he was a man of God. Maybe he was praying for the people of Israel, the people of Bethlehem, Judah. Maybe he was seeking God, seeking people to turn back to God. I I don't know what the situation was, but what I can tell you is God blessed him while he was there because he was a mighty man of wealth, a man of power, a man of influence. And he was going through the exact same trial that everybody else was. He wasn't above everybody else. He wasn't set aside where he, where he kept all of his food to himself. In fact, if, as we read and go through the book of Ruth, you're going to find he's very, very giving, uh, gives above and beyond what it, what's necessary for the law required him to give. Uh, he, he was a very generous man. He was a very loving man. Uh, 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 I believe a very godly man. Uh, uh, not, uh, uh, he, was, he wasn't perfect. He, he's still a man. But, 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 but he was a, a man of God. And God blessed him. So what can we learn from all this? Listen, no matter what your trials are, allow it to work in you. Whether it's famine, whether it's, whether it's financial, whether it's your health, whether, whether it's uh, relationship-wise, let God work in you and draw you closer to him. Don't run. See, the danger of this road of compromise was, uh, I want you to notice what what he he intended. He only intended to get out of the trial. He only intended to be there for a little while. He only intended, he intended to come back. He never intended for it to affect him the way that it did or affect his family the way that it did. But sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. and, And you can't take it back. You can't take it back. The decisions that you make uh, are, are, are decisions. It's, it, it, your, your history is your history. You can't erase it. There, were, there are things that I wish I could go back in my life and, and, and tell myself, hey, stupid, get away from that. Don't do that. You stay away from that person. Don't go there. Because you don't know what's going to happen because of that. I wish I could do that. 
I do not have a time traveling machine. And I can't. Now, I did learn from those mistakes. Thankfully, God is merciful and He is just. You say, well, God brought you to where you're, where you're at. Listen, if this is where God wanted me to be back then, he would have brought me here himself. He didn't need my stupidity or my mistakes to get me here. Well, but you learn things along the way. God can teach me through his word. He doesn't need me to make those mistakes. Do you understand that, young people? You don't need to, to make mistakes on your own. You can learn from scripture. You can learn from others. It, 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 can, it can change your life if you'll let that happen. It will keep you from sin. Listen, I wish I had never drank a drop of alcohol. I wish I had never taken any, any drug or anything that would uh, affect my body or my mind. I wish I could say that that wasn't me. I can't. Because I did those things. And there were consequences to those things. Everything looks good for a season. It isn't good for a season. And yes, the grace of God and the mercy of God can cleanse you. God can forgive you. God can work in you. And if you've made those steps and you've fallen into those things or, or something else on your, listen, uh, my sins don't have to be your sins and your sins don't have to be my sins. They're, they're all sin, right? God can fix you where you're at and find you where you're at and fix you and make you into what he wants you to be. But understand, you don't have to make those mistakes. You don't have to make those mistakes. But if you do, know that there will be consequences. Your choice may cost you more than you, than you understand. Your choices may cost you more than you understand. It could cost you personally, or it can cost your family. I never intended, it doesn't matter what you intended. Our, it's not about our motivation, it's about our lack of obedience. I, I didn't plan on, no, you didn't, but. We don't get to plan those things. We're not God. We're not God. It's the road to compromise. And the road to compromise has some bad potholes in it. I want to end with verse 5. So verse 6. And it's a thought for the next message. Verse 6 says, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. I don't know Naomi's thoughts about moving to, to Moab. I don't know if her husband gave her a choice. I don't know if they were in agreement. I don't know about her thoughts about her, son, her, her son's bearing. Uh, but what I do know is there came a point in Naomi's life where she decided to turn around. She decided to go back home. That was the beginning of the road to redemption. See, she's lost everything. Her husband's taken her to, to, to the land of Moab, away from her people, away from her family, away from everything. And they together, they built a home and a family there in Moab in, in a place away from God. And God punished them. But there came a point in her life when she desired to be back home. She desired to turn around. Didn't take away, didn't bring her back her husband or give her, to, give her her sons back. But notice what it said. She heard, she heard that the hand of God had come back upon the people of Bethlehem, Judah. And she rose to go. One of my favorite verses in the, in the passage of Scripture that talks about the, it's a parable, we call it the, the prodigal son. I believe it's more a story of the, the father, but 
It talks about how he, he goes and he spends all that he has, and he, uh, he's, he has no friends, he has no money left. In fact, he's, he's, he's feeding swine. Uh, and it says that he, that, he, that, he, that he would desire to eat of the, 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 the slop that he fed the swine. And if you know anything about Jews, they can't stand swine, let alone eating that kind of slop. And if you've ever seen what a pig eats, you wouldn't want to eat it either, uh, even whether you're Jewish or not. But it says, then he came to himself. There was a point in time where he said, I don't want this. I want to go home. Back to my father, where even the servants have have bread enough to eat. Listen, I can tell you, as somebody who has been there, and been on that road away from God. Living my life how I wanted to, regardless of what the word of God taught. I was doing everything that was right in my eyes. There came a point in time where I came to myself. I heard about it through the testimony of somebody else. And something changed in here, and I had a longing. I had a hunger to be back home. And I don't mean back home in Ohio. I mean, I mean back home with the Lord. Right with the Lord. See, it doesn't matter how far down the road of compromise you have gone, there is always opportunity to turn around. You can always go back home. You can keep going down the road that you're going. Let me tell you what's gonna, what, what you're going to find. Death. Consequences. Or you can turn around and see your heavenly father standing there far off with his arms out wide saying, come home. Come home. Father God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you that you love us. Lord, even before we were saved, Lord, it says that, that, uh, you, that uh, Lord, you loved us in our sin as, as sinners, Lord. Uh, even though we were sinners, you... Christ died for us, Lord. I, I thank you for that. I, I thank you that even now, as, as children of God, as, as we wander sometimes, Lord, we are prone to wander. Lord, we are prone to fall. We're prone to sometimes compromise. And even though we, it, we, we don't think it's going to be as bad as, as it could be, Father, the, that sin, those sins can, can take us out of fellowship with you and take us down a road away from you that, Lord, if we're not careful, we'll never come back from. I thank you for the for the picture of, of Naomi, Lord, and, and the, the beginning of that turnaround. God, I pray that you would help us to begin to seek after that road of redemption, Lord, that we might fall upon our knees before you, Lord, that we might seek your face. Father, if there is anybody here today that, that is away from you for whatever reason, Lord, whatever their motivation, whatever their, their desire, whatever their thought, Lord, may today be the day they come back to you, Father. May they, may they turn their back on whatever it is that, that they thought was worth it, Lord, and, and understand that there is nothing worth it leaving you behind, Father. God, I pray that uh, you would help us to confess our sins and make those things right before you. I ask that you would stir in our spirits uh, by your spirit through the word of God. I I pray, Lord, that you would work in a great and mighty way and the Lord will give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.